Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. In a previous video from a couple of weeks ago, we showed off the ship's battle organization. These are all of the billets assigned to individual spaces during general quarters. And we were specifically showing off how many people were crammed into forward plot. And uh, in that video, we asked, are there any other locations you guys would like to see? And many of you mentioned the ship's bridge or conning tower. And this is a question that we get very frequently here at the museum, uh, how many people were actually in here. And uh, well, today we've got the documentation that answers that question. And the answer is 23. See you guys later. So uh, there are 23 billets assigned to the bridge area. Here it's listed as conning tower slash navigation bridge. And that includes the bridge wings. This partially enclosed but unarmored bridge area. The conning tower itself. and the navigation spaces aft of the bridge. So I don't necessarily know where each of these people would be located. Uh, interestingly, some of them are almost certainly not inside the armored part of the ship during combat. And remember, during many uh, combat instances, the glass here would be rolled down, both so that the, uh, the ship's guns can fire without fear of overpressure shattering it, and so that if we take some sort of hit, that's not gonna turn the glass into more shrapnel flying around the room. You notice that it will roll down into pockets like this one, so if something does punch through that uh, bulkhead and, and cause it to shatter, it's not exploding outwards as if something hit it up here. A couple of the positions we've got. First off, we've got the officer of the deck and the junior officer of the deck. These are listed as OOD and JOOD. Uh, so those are the guys in charge. There are two other officers assigned to the bridge as well. Uh, J-O-O-W, the tactical communicator, uh, and then the navigation uh, slash piloting officer. Now, my suspicion is the officer of the deck, junior officer of the deck, wouldn't necessarily be standing next to each other, so they're likely spread out. The navigating officer almost certainly is inside uh, the, the chart house area, which we'll go to in a second. So the, the officers are not by design, uh, not grouped up in here. So a single shot hopefully isn't knocking out all four bridge officers. Now, looks like the next couple of billets are all navigation ratings. So let's head into the chart house. So uh, we've got the navigating officer who's almost certainly back in here. In fact, his office is uh, two compartments that way. During general quarters, he's likely not in there. He's probably out here supervising stuff. Uh, our next position in here is the navigation plotter slash supervisor. So this guy is the one who's tracing stuff out on the charts. He's probably a chief um, based on this. Uh, and, and he's supervising the other enlisted guys in here. Uh, next up, you've got the quartermaster of the watch. He is probably keeping the deck log and uh, taking care of all the chart stuff. Uh, skipping down, it seems like the other positions are likely located out there, except uh, when you get all the way to the bottom, you've got a fathometer. Uh, so it seems like this guy's job is just to look at the uh, sounding sonars that's judging the depth of the water under us. So that set, or what's left of it on New Jersey, is right here. And so that's giving you readings on how deep the water is under the battleship. Battleship New Jersey is often performing shore bombardment missions. That's the number one reason why she would be at general quarters most of the time, which means getting as close to shore as possible so she can fire as far inland as possible. Uh, these ships can have a very deep draft when fully loaded. It's important to make sure they're not going into too shallow water. It's not at all uncommon for Iowa-class battleships to run aground. So the last couple of positions we covered were from the navigating department. Now we've got a couple of positions that are from the deck department. We've got the bosun's mate of the watch, 
Uh, the bosun's mates are really utility positions. I'm not quite sure what they would be doing on uh, bridge watch here, but, uh, but you've got one assigned. Then you've got a helmsman and a lee helmsman. At least the helmsman would be inside uh, of the armored conning tower. The lee helmsman, I'm not sure if he would be out looking out on the uh, lee side of the ship where the helmsman is not focused or uh, where they would be. It seems a little tight in there for both. Next up, we've got a ton of communications positions. As you walk around the bridge, you'll see a tremendous amount of uh, communications. You've got phones like this one for calling different compartments in the ship. You've got sound-powered phones with growlers. For, for the various party lines that different departments are on. And then you've got lots of sound-powered phones here and then even more jacks so you can plug in headsets. Uh, you've got all sorts of different communication boxes and, and phones around this space. This is the main command and control space of the entire ship. So, uh, we've got a talker recorder on the JX uh, circuit. I should mention the Lee Helmsman is on the 1JV circuit. Uh, you've got a messenger of the watch. They uh, are essentially the runner. If all of this other communication stuff breaks down somehow, they can be sent to another area to deliver a message. Uh, we've got the 1JV DC talker and plotter. There's a set of damage control plates up here on the bridge which fold up into the overhead. In combat, those would fold down here and, and you can uh, write on them just like any other. So you've got that guy. Uh, you've got a talker on the JA circuit, a talker on the 21JS circuit and summary plot, a talker on the JL circuit. Uh, so yeah, lots of communications ratings in the bridge here. Next up, we've got some more navigation type positions. Uh, we've got a port and starboard bearing taker, both on the JW circuit. These guys would be using the Polaris's. There are a pair of Polaris's on the exterior bridge wing, so they might be completely exposed out there. There's also a pair of Polaris's on the forward face of the bridge up here. And uh, the, the bearing takers, again, the ship is designed to operate close to shore. So they are going to be using the Polaris's to take bearings of different known land points so you can triangulate your position. This is going to be supporting the navigators inside the chart house. Back behind the nav bridge, we've got more navigation spaces. This is where a lot of our uh, electronic navigation equipment is. And uh, there's a guy back here who's the nav PPI uh, person. That's their title. So they would be using the PPI arm here on a chart to plot our course. There's also a bearing recorder. Now this guy's also in the JW circuit, which is the same as the port and starboard bearing taker. So he is the one who's actually inside either in the chart house proper up forward or back here and receiving the messages that the port and starboard bearing takers are giving him about the ship's bearing relative to other positions so he can triangulate our position on the chart. So he's most likely back here working with the nav PPI guy. And finally, there are three more positions all on the JL circuit, the starboard lookout and talker, the port lookout and talker, and the aft lookout and talker. So obviously, a lot of your folks, your helmsmen, your uh, officer of the decks are probably looking forward in the direction that the ship is going. And then you've got lookouts checking out all the other positions. Iowa class battleships are incredibly long, so it's important that you don't have any blind spots. At the end of the day, 23 positions sounds like an awful lot just for the bridge, but when you actually look at the places these guys were likely assigned um, in that it can be the open bridge behind me, the navigation bridge here, the conning tower, the, and the various chart house rooms. Uh, they're actually pretty spread out up here, especially compared to our older video, uh, linked in the description below, where we talk about it's, it's practically the same number of guys that are down in forward plot all crammed into that one small room. So what's another position that you want to hear about the billets for? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.